Hi everybody, it's Salita Pompiani from the Pittsburgh Penguins. Guys, I have a night off tonight. The Penguins are playing the Ottawa Senators, and I am here with my good buddy, Justin Fabes, local Pittsburgh native, also doing? an amazing, I'm not finished with your intro yet. We got mm. amazing country singer and songwriter. Thank Justin, you. thank you so much for letting me come in and see your uh, world thank you tonight. Thank you for coming, I appreciate it. So, so I want to start off a couple questions from myself. We got a lot of different great questions from a lot of your fans on Facebook, but let's start from the very beginning. How did you get into this career? Why did you want to pursue country music? Um, I mean, I, I've, I've loved for country music. I love all kinds of music, but the uh, best way to sum it up is when I was a little kid and people were in the sandbox playing and, and outside playing around, I was inside listening to music and listening to records and making cassette tapes and mixtapes. So uh, music's kind of like in my blood. So. Yeah, and your dad had a big influence on your career. Yeah, my dad, my grandfather. Uh, my family's been a huge part of my success. Uh, they've been behind me ever since, so uh, I can't, uh, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I can't thank them enough. Absolutely. Well, let's get to some of these fan questions. You guys send so many great ones in. Let's start with this because I'm very proud to say you have won and been dominated for so many numerous awards throughout your career and especially as of recent. So what do you take pride in the most, being a singer, a songwriter, or a performer, or all three? I definitely take pride in all three, but the most is definitely as a songwriter. Uh, that's mm -hmm. what I started doing. Before I could remember, I remember trying to write lyrics and write songs. And uh, once I got comfortable doing that, I started honing my vocals, and then the performing came after that. So I would definitely say as, as a songwriter, I look at it this way. If I can never sing again or I can never perform again, I can always write and write for somebody. Definitely. And this is a question for myself I'm going to throw in there. <laughs> I saw that you have performed and opened for so many huge country stars. Sam Hunt. Who else? Uh, Dirk, Dirk Bentley. Bentley. Yeah. Who has been your absolute favorite, would you say? Uh, opening up for? Yeah. Uh, when we opened up for, for uh, Lady Annabella on, her to on their tour uh, with Sam Hunt and uh, Hunter Hayes, I mean, it was they were amazing. So that, that was an unbelievable experience. You kind of remind me of Hunter Hayes a little okay, bit. Okay, thank you. I can you. see I it. That's that. a compliment. It is, it is. I like thank him. You. He's great music, that. just like you. Thank you. So I know that a local um, radio host in West Virginia actually called you the male version of Taylor Swift. <laughs> can you explain that? I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's a great thing. Uh, I take it as a good thing because, I mean, she's like, a dynasty you know she she's unbelievable yeah. she, she she's the total package she writes amazing songs she sings uh, she's a great performer uh so i think at that time when 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 that dj said that it's because he, he was relating to you know i write a lot of songs from from my heart and and relationships i've been in so i, I think that's kind of what he meant but so i take it as a compliment so definitely Absolutely. i love t swift so go. save me let's talk about that I was showing my sister the music video early, <laughs> earlier today, and it's very powerful. And yeah. It has a really, really powerful message that I think speaks to a lot of people, but sure. you have a love-hate relationship with that song. Yeah, I don't play it a lot. Uh, when I wrote that song, I was going through a really, really tough time. Uh, in my past and in today, I deal with depression. And at that time, I was engaged, and that fizzled, and it was just like the whole world was kind of coming down. And we went into the studio to cut a new single and for radio. And the song that we had, the song that I had to go in, um, it just wasn't, wasn't there. It wasn't happening. Uh, so the producer at the time said, you know, like, why don't we try something else? And the way I was feeling at the time, I just grabbed my guitar, and I think I wrote that in about 15 minutes. The band was there, and we went in, and, and we knocked it out. And uh, um, I, I had a love-hate relationship. I do have a love-hate re relationship with it. I didn't really like it at the time because it just kind of took me back to that time. But um, now we're starting to play it again because it, it means so much to people. Mm -hmm. uh, because they've gone through people with depression or, or a certain disease, and it's gotten through them. And uh, so it was definitely a blessing, put it that way. Definitely. And that music video, it was so awesome to see just the behind the scenes, the production, because that's what I do. So I know a lot, a little bit of what you guys do right, and right. what goes into that. How was cool was making that video was that one of your first music videos yeah actually it was my first full-length music video before that wow. we shot a music video it was a live music video video at, at saddle ridge uh that's mm -hmm. not around in pittsburgh anymore I that remember was that yeah place. that was but that was a live video this is our first major motion uh, uh video and uh, we had the great director brett mcginnis direct it and Kara parish was in it and, mm -hmm. and uh it, it was an amazing experience, so it, it was awesome. Definitely. Okay, enough Enough with me for now. We'll get back <laughs> to more of my questions. We'll go to another fan question. This one is, you signed your first recording deal this past year with 
me mi5 slash universal group so how did that come about i mean you had to have been stoked about yeah that. absolutely um at the time we were we were playing a show in manaka pennsylvania we were in this, this uh, small uh, bar in manaka and um i got a phone call prior to that like a week before from the label out of nowhere and they were interested and they said they were watching me for about a couple of years and mm-hmm. they said it was about time that they came and saw me live because you know anybody can sound good on a recording uh, so when I got that phone call, I actually called my manager and was like, you know, it's not funny. Stop, stop messing with me. You know, I thought he was pulling my leg and he had no idea what, what, uh, what I meant. So, um, we had the show and I didn't expect anything. And after the show, my manager came over to me and said, Hey, there's some people here from, from universal and MI5 and, uh, they want to talk to you. So we talked to them and we set a meeting that week after, and, um, we had some options, some other places, but, um, they, uh, they really, we really hit it off, and, and, and they were behind me as a songwriter, and mm-hmm. and um, so it was a great fit. I'm very fortunate to have that opportunity. Definitely, and I know you're killing it here in the Berg, <laughs> but you've done so much, even nationally. I know you performed a lot of times down in Nashville, yeah. including the 2016 CMA Fest. Yeah. Would you ever consider moving down to Nashville? Uh, yeah, I get that question all the time. Um, there was a f- couple times where I was going to move down to Nashville a couple years ago, and... Um, an artist actually told me, you know, a lot of people go to Nashville. Nashville's the best of the best. And you can go down there, but most of the time, people that go down there that aren't ready kind of fizzle out and they're back here. He said, when you're selling out your hometown, you're selling out states around your hometown and, and the cities around your cities, um, then it's time for you to go to Nashville. So um, today, I, I don't believe that you have to go to Nashville to, to kind of conquer the dream. I, I don't live in Nashville, and so far, so good. But um, I feel like you have to, you have to start and, and build from there. For sure. Another fan question. Do you think people still seek out and appreciate live performances as they had in the past? I don't think as much. No. I think today with social media, and I mean, look what we're doing. I know. <laughs> we're live right now on Facebook. Exactly. Crazy. People are in their underwear eating popcorn right now and <laughs> on their couch. But um, uh, I don't think they do appreciate it as much. Like I said, anybody can go into a studio and sound great uh, with the technology today. Mm-hmm. But when you go into and do a live show uh, with a band, and you feel that passion, you feel those songs, uh, you feel that energy, um, you, you really get the feel of that band and what they're trying to do. So I don't think people appreciate it as much. Unfortunately, the way the economy is and the way ticket prices are and scalpers, it's, hard. Uh, it's really hard. Uh, yeah. So I don't think they do, hopefully, then that, that time will change. Yeah, I still love it. I mean, I'm excited to see you tonight. Thank you. That's coming up, guys, so make sure you stay tuned because you have three songs you're going to be playing for us later on. Yeah, that's right. We'll get to that, though. we still got a few more questions we've got to get in here. Okay, next fan question. Justin, all athletes and performers have rituals. They have routines before they take the stage. What do you do, and do you have a certain good luck charm? Um, yeah, I definitely. I wear my, my grandfather's dog tags. That, uh, from the Korean War. I wear them every time I perform. But before show, I usually do a lot of pacing. My band and, and my manager <laughs> makes fun of me because they feel like I'm about to take off. But um, uh, my drummer, Neil, leads us in a prayer before we go on stage. Uh, and I feel like kind of like a caged animal because I'm just ready to go. And, and the yeah. show for us starts, it doesn't start at 9 or 10 when, when we actually go on. It starts like at noon or 1 because we, we go, we set up, we sound check. So that whole day mm-hmm. we're anticipating the show and then – when, when the crowd comes in and, and, uh, and then the band takes the stage and I, I still, I'm kind of waiting around. So I think what I usually do, we say a prayer and I always hug my manager. We, we have a big hug. And, you always uh, hug Tony. I always hug Tony. I do. <laughs> we, uh, he's been there from the beginning and we've, we've kind of taken some shots together. He's taken them and I've taken them. So it's kind of like, all right, we did it. We got this one. We got another one, another one in the books. Mm-hmm. On to the next one. And what's your favorite part about being on tour? And I want to know this because I really don't know a whole lot about the music business. So you're teaching me some things tonight. <laughs> uh, well, I was, I'm fortunate. Me and the band, we went on our first first actual uh, small tour this past year, the Set Me Free Tour. Uh, mm-hmm. So we got to play states and cities we never played before. Mm-hmm. So um, it, it's amazing to go out. Uh, there's nothing better than going out and going to a city or a state that you've never been to, meeting fans you never met, and you're playing a song and they're singing it back to you. Yeah, so that it's, must it's feel pretty amazing. amazing. It is, it is. It's, it's, it's. And to even stop singing yourself when you could just let them take over. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it, that's that's what it's all about. Okay, a couple more fan questions, guys. I like this one because I was wondering this too, Justin. You seem to keep your personal life very <laughs> private. Why? Uh, 
doing what I do, doing what you do, you know, in the entertainment business, uh, mm -hmm. you, you're very, everybody's a, able to get to you. And uh, I think it's very important to, you know, on a sane level to try to keep that, that boundary and keep that, mm -hmm. keep that line. So, um, like I said, there's, there's so much social media out there and everywhere you go, you're, you're documenting it. And I just think it's important that, to have that space and the, to keep time to yourself. Yeah, and also, so I know you said when kids were outside playing when they were little, you were inside, and right. you were working hard, you were listening to music, you were doing, you knew what you wanted to do at a young age. Yeah. So how do you define success? I mean, that obviously has led to all your success that you've had. Sure. I mean, my success is obviously going to be different from your success and everybody else's success. But um, I feel, for me, success-wise, uh, I feel like so far so good, but my goal in the next couple of years is beyond a, a major tour, uh, you know, and having a number one song, a number one album, and uh, being up there with the greats like Tim McGraw and, and Kenny Chesney and Sam Hunt and and George Jones. So um, th that's my that's my take on. And I it. think you will be. I hope. I hope. And I'm going to be excited because I got to do this with you Absolutely. now before it all happened. <laughs> so real quick, because yeah. thank you so much, of course, to all the fans for your amazing questions. And I'm sorry if we didn't get to all of them. But I want you to go over your three songs tonight because he's going to be playing live for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're going to do Love You Like Country Song, which is yeah. a single that's out right now. Uh, and then Leaving Kind. And then actually, it's kind of a surprise, not anymore, but we're debuting the brand new single, I Hope She'll Think of Me, tonight for the first time for anybody For the first here. time ever. Yeah, and it's going to be available Okay, in the guys. So next stay month, tuned. So. And you're doing that last. So yeah. you guys don't go anywhere. Keep those underwear on and keep the popcorn out. This is my cue. <laughs> Maybe you'll see me again back up dancing.
our brand new single, so I hope she'll think of me. We hope you like it. single. I hope she'll think of me. Thank you guys so much for checking us out. We'll see you at the next show.